seems clear this body is prepared to pass the Great American Outdoors Act. It'll be doing so, it will be doing so without the bipartisan language to strengthen coastal resiliency around the country, sending a final message to the American people that the Senate cares more about parks than it does about people. Madam President. Let me just say a couple things first. Uh, my colleague had just said that this is paid for. I almost burst out laughing. It's paid for by taking dollars currently obligated to go to the United States Treasury and shuffling them over. That's paid for like I'm going to take money that's going for groceries and instead I'm going to pay for the movie theater. We're going to take money that's spent on essentials and spend it on something which is wonderful. But no one would say it's essential. Hmm. And I say that one only must need to follow the money, to follow the money to see that the Senate cares more about parks than it does about people. The Great American Outdoors Act will spend billions on deferred maintenance, broken toilets, leaky roofs, et cetera, in national parks. Um, but in fact, 60% of this money is going to seven states. The Land Water Conservation Fund spending shows the disparity clearly, spending 17.66 cents per capita in inland states while just $7.53 on coastal states, and is spoken of as an economic development tool, raising 40-something billion dollars for the, communities, <laughs> for the communities in which the investment is made, which tells you why the senators from these seven states are the co-sponsors of the bill. Who wouldn't want $40 billion in economic activity at the expense of everybody else? But who is it, who is it at the expense of? Madam President. 42% of Americans live in parishes or counties in coastal United States. 85% of Americans live in those coastal states. And 0% of this money is going to address coastal resiliency. Areas increasingly threatened by rising sea levels and flooding. Lives being lost, communities being upended by catastrophic flood events such as hurricanes can cause. I've seen it in my state of Louisiana. We've seen it on the news. We should be painfully aware at this point about the devastation hurricanes and other flooding disasters can have in our society. So the Great American Outdoors Act spends billions on where people vacation, but absolutely nothing on where people live. Now, Madam President, I've been vocal in my opposition to the bill in its current form. And the reasons for that opposition have been misconstrued. So let me please now clarify. I heard one senator say that I only wanted money for Gulf states. Yes, I do want money for Gulf states. Louisiana has been the hardest hit by coastal erosion. And by the way, 90% of the funding for the Great American Outdoors Act comes from um, energy production off the, off the Gulf Coast. But I want funding for all coastal states. Louisiana's wetlands are eroding into the Gulf at the rate of one football field per hour. But we're not alone. Go to barrier islands on the eastern coast. Go to Alaska and see the communities that are dissolving into the ocean. Miami property values are falling as the Atlantic Ocean rises, threatening with greater flooding, causing rising insurance rates and causing lower property values. That's Miami Beach, Sea Island, Georgia, Cape Fear, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Maine, you name it. Each has water coming higher than it ever has. Wouldn't it have been great if as these bills passed out of the committee together, a coastal resiliency piece of legislation would have been added to the Great American Outdoors Act. But the people that 42% of Americans who live on the beach and uh, live in a, in a coastal or uh, parish or county, and the 85% who live in a coastal state, they are waiting for some help to come later. Now, that said, some have said I'm against giving any money to the national parks. Nothing further from the truth. I've stated before from this very desk, from speeches on this issue, that I believe that national parks are a vital part of the American experience. Just as one of my colleagues said, they provide opportunities for Americans to experience the natural environment, learn about our nation's history. I would vote happily for the Great Americans Outdoors Act, giving it billions, if only we would spend at least a little bit, maybe a dime, on coastal resiliency for where people live. 
I'm not against parks. I'm just against parks over people. Now, as people misstated my opposition, they correctly stated the reason they do not wish my language, they do not wish to include my language to provide protection, coastal resiliency for the parishes and counties where people live. This is the one true thing. Folks are afraid that if the coastal resiliency legislation is included, that the bill would not pass. For some, it would be perceived as encouraging offshore drilling. That would raise issues of climate change. Uh, and again, that it would not pass. Well, there are several responses. First, if you don't try, you fail. Henry Ford said, whether you say that you can or you say you cannot, you're correct. Such is the case with this bill. If people say that we cannot include legislation for coastal resiliency to protect parishes and counties where 42% of Americans live, we can't do so because it would not be included in the first place. Secondly, it was said that the Great American Outdoors Act is based on revenue from offshore drilling, and therefore folks would not vote for it. And again, one of those things that you have to almost laugh at, because if people really think that, it's either the epitome of hypocrisy or it just shows gross ignorance. The Great American Outdoors Act is funded with revenue from offshore oil and gas production. So for someone to say that no, folks won't vote for a coastal resiliency bill because it relies upon offshore oil and gas revenue, but they're going to support the Great American Outdoors Act, which relies on offshore oil and gas revenue to pay for it, again, you just have to laugh. It's either hypocrisy or it's gross ignorance. I actually think it's just not true. That the real reason that this bill is not included, that, that the coastal um, resiliency bill is not included, is that folks are afraid if it's included, it would not pass. Now, one of my colleagues who agrees with me on this issue said that, you know, it's kind of like being in a lifeboat and you say, we're in, pull up the ladder. Once we've got this legislation in a form, Madam President, once it was in a form that it would pass, the folks who wanted it to pass, who disproportionately their states benefit from this, that they will recognize and realize the economic development, they said, let's pull up the ladder. We don't care about coastal resiliency enough that we are going to actually include, we're going to actually include legislation that would support it financially. So they had their money, they achieved their objective, the heck with those at risk for rising sea levels, the heck with those 85% of people who live in coastal states, the 42% who live in a coastal parish or county. We will get our bathrooms fixed, the potholes done, come visit us, you'll absolutely need to because in the meantime you will be flooding. Um, so the idea of getting your funding and your bill in place, you're on the life raft and then pulling up the ladder brought to mind this image. Here you see folks being pulled up a ladder. Hurricane Katrina, the wetlands south of New Orleans had eroded into the ocean. When Katrina hit, it was almost a straight shot to those levees. And such a straight shot, eventually they collapsed. Mr. President, because they collapsed, we had flooding in New Orleans. There you see a truck almost completely submerged. There you see somebody who broke through their roof so that they could get on top of their roof so that they could be rescued. And they are being pulled up because the people who wrote this bill said, no, if we include the coastal resiliency, our bill won't pass. So therefore, we're not going to try because they said, by golly, we're in the we're in the life raft, pull up the ladder. There will be many more Americans pulled up a ladder. But they will be pulled up a ladder by the Coast Guard to rescue them from a rooftop because of rising sea levels induced flooding and hurricanes in their hometown. And I would like to say that that would be a rare event. We've seen it increasingly, though. And again, since more and more Americans live in coastal parishes and counties, this will become a bigger and bigger issue. So this photo seems appropriate. Folks didn't want to try. 
fearing that caring for Americans, helping to prevent an incident such as this, would imperil fixing potholes in national parks located in disproportionately seven states. And again, because of that, we, have, we will have more scenes like this. More deaths, more devastations, more lives in turmoil, and billions upon billions spent in disaster relief because this body refused to invest in coastal resiliency. If there was ever a case of a stitch in time could save nine, it is this. Again, folks say, well, what could you do to coastal resiliency? I'll just speak of Terrebonne Parish, South Louisiana, borders the Gulf of Mexico. They put in a flood wall recently. There was a high water event, 10,000 homes that would have been flooded, maybe a billion or two in disaster relief. No flooding occurred because of an investment in coastal resiliency. Now, we can do it if we try. But if we say we're not going to, we're in the life raft, pull up the ladder, we've got our money, potholes will be fixed in our home state. In the meantime, if you're in a coastal parish or, state, or, or county, um, we'll be there afterwards to give you money through FEMA, but we won't be there beforehand to keep you from flooding in the first place. And this is what happens when you put parks over people. Perhaps the Senate should reverse this and put people over parks. Now, I said at the outset, Great American Outdoors Act is going to pass. I see it. They've done their work. Uh, it's going to pass. And I will just go at home tonight frustrated thinking of this picture and how many more we have. But if the sponsors of this bill who've been all about we'll be with you next time are truly, truly, truly wanting to prevent another incident like this, then maybe they'll join my bar bipartisan coalition advocating for either a coastal amendment or some legislation in the future and show that, there are, that they are as willing to fight as hard to save lives of those who live on our coastline as they are to secure funding to fix broken toilets and potholes and leaky roofs. Madam, uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor.